Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albano Plays the Ace Attorney, or that's not the trilogy anymore, Ace Attorney Investigations Episode 8. Uh, not very many people watch this series anymore, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing it. Also, I was only on a break because, well, I got busy for one. And the other thing was that I didn't know how to finish this and nobody commented how to finish it until yesterday. And then I read that and I was like, oh, okay. So now we're back into it, you know. Uh, there's like a little bit of like fizziness on my background but i got my character my own character model to be more in color i guess so uh that was all right yeah all the lights are on uh so we're back and we're in, yeah okay so the issue here also i got a new background i think this this is more fitting to the uh to the series you know actual phoenix right trial style courtroom that's what i'm talking about baby so, I was right, but I deduced the wrong part of the thing. Uh, when I say I was right, I mean that one of the 19 things I guessed happened to be right, but it was just the wrong thing. So, like, I was, you know, clicking over here, because, like, oh, but it's on top of the cargo, but, like, apparently this and this are two different things, so you had to deduce, like, the very bottom thing, which is some absolute nonsense. But we checked that. Cargo from Zheng Fei. No, I don't need to check it. We need to present it. Because the timing is off. There is clearly a contradiction here. What are you going on about? It's just a simple case of a cargo cover getting stuck under another piece of cargo. Ah! That's not possible. But it is. It shouldn't be this way, but the statue is on top of the cloth. Supposing that the neighboring piece of cargo was brought on board in Zheng Fei, there is no way that any part of it should wind up under something from Europe. Which means that this fake statue was smuggled on board in Zheng Fei. But then what about the cargo certificate? Let me ask in return, what about Agent Hicks? Why did he come down here in the middle of the flight? There is only one reason why. To secure proof of smuggling activity aboard this flight. So you say, but I don't believe he had to do that mid-flight. He, We could have just as easily inspected all of the cargo after the plane landed. That may be true. However, you have it backwards, Francisca. Sure, Agent Hicks could have waited until after the plane had landed. But he had a reason for coming down to the cargo hold. Suppose he had found the fake at the airport. It would have been after the swap had occurred. At that time, the suspicion would naturally fall onto the statue's owner who would have no way to prove that the statue was switched without his knowledge, which means there is someone involved who is forging or modifying cargo certificates. Whoa. Ooh, give me my influence back, thank you. I guess the victim knew the real version of this was gonna get nabbed, huh? Yes, while this photo could be seen as nothing more than a simple souvenir, it was in fact taken to be used as a reference document later on. Next, Agent Hicks had to secure proof that the smuggling had taken place. He came down here to take a picture of the cargo hold, a rather empty one at that, right before the fake statue could be loaded on board. A photo of the hold missing a valuable piece of cargo would have been proof enough. After that, all he had to do was hold the Zhang Fei cargo crew and arrest the smuggler. Exactly. This only goes to prove my theory. If the statue was not in the cargo hold during the Europe Zhang Fei leg of the trip, there would have been enough height from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death. Officer! Move this statue immediately! I want a thorough examination of the floor underneath! Now! Miss Von Karma, I'm ready to report my findings! Go on. After moving the Alley Fred statue out of the way, we tested the area under it with Lumino, and that was a reaction! I see. There was a reaction to Lumino, an indication that there was blood in that spot. Yeah, can we stop looking at it now, sirs? It would seem that my deductions were correct after all. I suppose it would appear that way. The culprit cleaned the blood up well. And how do you think the killer did that? How did the killer clean up all the blood? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. With the Virginian cloth, of course. Oh, that yeah, that makes sense. 
The killer used the bloody cloth I found inside the suitcase to clean up the mess. There would have been way too much blood for one cloth. That's like if you spill a glass of water and you use one paper towel. That shit's not gonna work. I see. They had a need to clean up all the blood before the plane landed in Zhengfei. Yes, because otherwise the cargo crew would have discovered it during the layover. So you guys are saying that the murder happened before the plane landed at Zhengfei? There is no other conceivable timeline for the events of the murder. But if that is true, then that throws a certain person's testimony into doubt. If the murder occurred before we landed in Zhengfei, then this becomes highly suspect. Miss Meal's testimony. Recall Miss Meal's testimony about Agent Hicks in regard to when we departed Zhengfei. I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in his seat at 5 a.m., you know? She claims Agent Hicks was alive at the time of the service calls, but that totally contradicts the facts, sir. But why would she lie about something like that? I think the only person who can answer that is Miss Meal herself. Ooh. Ooh. Damn. Me and the, like, 300 of you are so excited right now? Hell yeah. Dude, you guys are special, okay? Don't let anybody tell you different. Everybody else fell off because it was a spin-off game or because they were never interested to begin with. But you guys, you stuck around. You're still here. That's worth something, man. March 12th, 3.35 p.m. 35 p.m. Flight I-390. Go to lower deck cargo hold. Miss Meal. Miss Meal. Huh? Do you recall what you said earlier? about when you answered some service calls as we were departing from Zhengfei? Uh-huh. You said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at that time. However, that is simply not possible, because Mr. Hicks was dead long before we ever touched down in Zhengfei. Oh? Miss Cammy Meal. Um, maybe I didn't see what I thought I did? No one could make a mistake so large, Miss Meal. Um, but I make that kind of boo-boo all the time. <sighs> this is going nowhere. There must be a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well. Miss Meal, if you please, tell me about your alibi during the time span, from just before we were to land at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, Mr. Edgeworth? Damn. All right, let me save. One thing that's nice about allegedly ROMs is that we can get the save state right where we want it. <sighs> oh, um, yeah. From three to four, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room all by my lonesome self. <sighs> oh, um, yeah. And from five to six, I was, um in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. How is a man supposed to react to a testimony like that? Miss Meal, wake up! Ah! <sighs> she fell asleep again. It looks like the only way I'm going to be able to wake her up is by pressing her. Sounds good to me, man. Huh. <laughs> Press the Miss Meal, wake up! I'm awake, I'm awake! <sighs> Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you do something about this flight attendant this instant! Why ask me to wake her when you can finally put that whip to an appropriate use? From three to four, I was in the flight attendant's room. If I remember correctly, food was being served in first class and the lounge between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. Yeah, but that kind of stuff's run by Miss Rhoda. Then what were you doing in the attendance room at that time? Eating and then having a most delicious dream. You mean you were neglecting your duties? No way, sleeping's part of our job too, you know. Miss Meal, how many times do I have to repeat myself? Wake up! <sighs> I'm awake, I'm awake. 
Yeah, which, what did you whip me for, sir? Oh, what did I miss? A poor detective being on the receiving end of a lash in your stead. Really? <laughs> Sorry about that. You can make amends for that by continuing with your testimony. And from five to six, I was in the flight attendant's room. So you were alone the entire time, were you? Yeah, no one else even popped their head in to say hi. Oh, well I think a contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Miss Meal, there is a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. Huh? What are you talking about? It's not possible that you were alone in the attendance room the whole time from five to six. Okay, why? And the reason for that is... Let's see, Sky Magazine, we check that. Let's see, five to six, your drinks doesn't matter. But like she said, she wasn't doing any of that anyway. Um, in flight shop, after the turbulence. I forget when the turbulence was. Maintenance pocket, missing cell phone. Spilt during the turbulence, footprints. Reloaded on board during between four and five. You were in the alone in the attendance room from 5 to 6, okay? Mr. Ackby Hicks was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. Your testimony says that you saw some stuff. Now take a look at this eye-opening piece of evidence. Okay, that was wrong. Miss Meal, I need you to wake up and take a look at this. Enough of your foolishness to hurry up and show us the real evidence. Guess this wasn't as eye-opening as I thought. Oh, did you say something? Finally awake. What do you mean? I've been awake this whole time. Ah, it's all right if you were sleeping, pal. Pay no mind to the scruffy detective beside you and wake up. Yeah, hurry up and wake up, Miss Meal. Enough with the clowning around. This is my show and I will resolve the contradictions as I see fit. Okay, so we're supposed to press this. And then we raise an objection. There's a clear contradiction and I'll show you it right after I save the game. Completely fine. All right, so it wasn't that. Uh, say it wasn't your testimony. I fly suitcase. Killer got this from the cargo hold, okay. I mean, we're not trying to pin her as the killer yet. Although it might be likely. Or though, it's either her or the captain. But the captain hasn't even like shown up and done anything yet, so. Who's to say? Autopsy report, instantaneous res, bruising from the mid to back. Time of death between three and 4.30. Yes. Okay, well that doesn't, that's not technically relevant. Suitcase receipt, bought at the in-flight shop and left in the attendance room, 5.40 a.m., BAM! I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Meal. Huh? A receipt? For what? It's for the suitcase Miss Tenero bought. Now if I may direct your attention to the timestamp. As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m. Miss Tenero! Yes? Huh? Why is the killer here? I thought you'd have her locked up by now. I requested that she be present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Miss Tenero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip from first class down to the first floor in-flight shop, correct? Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase, after which I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. And did you see Miss Meal there at that time? Um, no. So, Miss Meal, where were you really between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Miss Cammy Meal! Huh? Uh, um, the bathroom? I'll be the one to ask the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Nature calls, you know. Do you take me for a fool? That's a little too convenient to be true. Um, but it's the truth. Cross my heart! Hmm, I don't have enough conclusive proof to counter-argue her at this stage. You don't believe me, do you? 
But please, won't you give me a chance and hear me out? Reason for suspicion. Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew, but you'd think then maybe you should also suspect, sus suspect Miss Rhoda too. She's the one in charge of the elevator keycard in the shop, you know. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. Please leave Miss Tenero out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. I don't get it. Why are you covering for Miss Rhoda all of a sudden? Oh, now I get it. Maybe you've got your eye on Miss Rhoda. Of course I'm keeping an eye on her. I can't very well let her escape, can I? Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of li- I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate my sense of design. Now's not the time for this sort of talk. I know you suspect me because I'm one of the crew. But you'd think then maybe you should also suspect Miss Rhoda too? She's the one in charge of the elevator keycard and the shop, you know. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. All right, I think we just need to press everything again. Um, hold on a sec here. Yes, yeah, okay. I don't know if like you could see like the red lines on the stream. I hope not, but I just got rid of them. Um, no, it's not the only reason I have for suspecting you. Your statements regarding Mr. Hicks also turned out to be a bunch of lies. Ah, uh, but say I wasn't an attendant. You wouldn't suspect me then, would you? Mm, yes, I suppose that's true enough. That wouldn't make any... Th th so what? You are an attendant. Oh, but if we lived in this alternate reality, you wouldn't suspect me, right? Oh, well, damn, you just proved everything. Okay, you're free to go, miss. Dude, people argue using that logic all the time. They actually do. It's really annoying. She is already being detained for further questioning, or have you already forgotten? Oh. Yeah, guess I just forgot. Kami, don't tell me you suspect me too. Sorry, can't help it. I mean, other than you, there's no one else who could have done it. I can't believe you would think that. I mean, me, a killer? Miss Meal, what did you mean just now by no one else who could have done it? She's the one in charge of the elevator keycard and the shop. And what are you in charge of, Miss Meal? Um, I take care of the attendance room. That doesn't count. Aw, but I spend so much time in there, it might as well be my responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Cammy is very talented in languages. So she assists passengers who may not speak English, especially those who speak Virginian. She is the only one on this flight who is fluent. Oh, you mean that kind of what am I in charge of? Why didn't you say so in the first place? What else could I have meant? Yeah, so I'm really good at Virginian. She's fluent in Virginian. Then I suppose you're in charge of processing documents in Virginian. Yeah, I take care of anything that has to do with Virginian. Hmm, very interesting. Hmm. Which means she would have been the one who have forged that document? Oh. Actually, your on-the-job behavior makes you super suspicious in my eyes. Huh? But why? While Miss Tenero is busy with the passengers and all of her other duties, you have a lot of free time on your hands, thus providing you with ample time to commit the crime. Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you cease and desist in this line of conjectural questioning. I won't allow you to bluff your way through this like a certain defense lawyer. Hmm. But I do not honestly believe Miss Meal does any actual work aboard this flight. Oh, that's not true, Mr. Edgeworth. Although, well... All I'm in charge of are the attendance room and some Virginian stuff. So what exactly do you do as the one in charge of some Borginian stuff? Um, I do stuff like translate things from and into Borginian. Cammy is the only member of the crew who understands Borginian, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Meal, I take it then that it is your job to process all the Borginian paperwork? Yeah, see, I totally pull my weight around here. 
so it would appear. Perhaps I should ask her for a few more details about her work, and... Miss Meal, it's very unladylike to push suspicion onto someone else. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just saying that Miss Rhoda is very su There you go, pushing everything onto her again. Um, I don't get what you're saying. It must be a really abstract concept, huh? Hmm, <laughs> the only thing abstract here is the landscape inside your head. Okay, Miss Rhoda, she's the one in charge of the elevator in the shop. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. All I'm in charge of are the attendance rooms. So this should be the thing, but it's like we're not contradicting you here. If I go and present the thing that you are in charge of, which would be the Alif Red Certificate. Objection! Well, I guess we're just doing this. That's fine. It worked. It worked out, so we're good. Yeah. So, you are the only one in this flight crew that speaks Borginian. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I studied abroad in Virginia for a while. If that is the case, then the signature on this document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of documentation with only one purpose to lead anyone who read it to believe that Mr. LeBlanc's statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have either prepared or processed this document in Borginian is you, Miss Meal. Without your participation, the smuggling of the Alif Red could not have occurred. Don't sleep while I'm pointing my finger at you! Oh, I wouldn't dream of falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. It is exactly as you say. Are you confessing to having participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed off on that document, but you can't use that fact alone to make your allegation of smuggling stick. There is no direct correlation, after all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really, all you did was sign it? I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. So, sorry about that. Hmm. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be one tough fight. Suppose, and this is just a supposition, even if I was involved in the smuggling, you can't throw the charge of murder on me just like that. If you were involved in the smuggling, you would have a strong motive to kill. Agent Hicks was in the middle of an investigation regarding a smuggling ring, and just when he was about to close in, he's killed by a member of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is the smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things on this plane for work purposes. Hmm. So perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you. I meant the killer. First, it was myself. And now it's Miss Tenero who is under the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin this crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is being set up or that she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed the intended target from the very beginning. I believe that the plan was to push all of the blame for the crime onto her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. Uh-oh. This proves that the killer was out to frame Miss Tenero from the very beginning. Well, it would be the... Do we have the key card as evidence? No. Okay. Uh, do we have the iFly suitcase? Got this from the cargo hold. Would this- I think this would be it. The killer could have hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose the suitcase. Why is that? Perhaps it was to move the body up from the lower deck to the first floor. However, why go through the trouble to do so? The only way all of these actions make sense is if the killer had wanted to frame Miss Tenero for the murder. Miss Tenero buys a suitcase on every flight she works without fail, but should her suitcase be switched with the one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. Hmph. <laughs> there wasn't enough time to put the body back into the suitcase. Ergo, they may do with whoever was at hand, adapted with their plan. 
and tried to frame me as I bike lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer then went to hide the suitcase in the in-flight shop and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a false weapon. A lot of work for a fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? That is because of the special circumstances surrounding this particular case. What special circumstance dictated the need for the killer to frame someone? Where the murder took place. I would say where, because it took place in the cargo hold, which only like a couple people, or like one, or like really anybody could have done it. Um, when doesn't really matter to me. Who the murder victim was doesn't really matter to me. Who the murder victim was because it's like an agent of Interpol, so like it's gonna be a really, I, I, I think where. The special circumstance is simply that the murder took place on a plane mid-flight. No matter which country, customs is quite strict in this day and age. So no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there was no choice but to frame either Miss Tenero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries of the criminal's movements is not Miss Tenero or myself, but you, Miss Camille. Only you and you alone could be the killer. Oh, and? Hmm. Are you done already? I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence. Yeah. I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive... DEFINITIVE EVIDENCE! And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. His phone! I don't have any actual evidence. I thought not. But that's because it went missing, and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle that is this case, there was one piece I kept getting stuck on. And that is the victim's cell phone. Francisca, you were waiting at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks's cell phone. Or at least that's what you told me. That's right! But Agent Hicks's cell phone could not be found at the crime scene. You mean the killer took the phone with him? Precisely. I suspect that if we were to find that phone, it would lead us to the killer. <laughs> come on, get serious. If the victim fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know that until we try a little experiment, will we? Francisca, I'd like to ask for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do. Agent Hicks's phone! It's ringing from somewhere, sir! I hear it, Detective. Now where is it coming from? Miss Meal, wake up! Sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. I got sleepy all of a sudden because it sounds like a lullaby I used to love as a child. Ugh, I'd better find that cell phone fast. It sounds like the phone is up in the flight attendant's room. Oh, we better hurry to the flight attendant's room, sir. Oh my god, go get up there! Oh yeah, that is quite loud. The ringing's coming from somewhere in here, sir. Leave no stone unturned, Detective Gumshoe. We must find it. It doesn't seem to be over here. Then let's look somewhere else, sir. Obviously. The ringing's coming from in here, sir. What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Tenero's. What? Of course it is. They planted it there. So, Mr. Edgeworth, how did it go? Where did you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room, in Miss Tenero's locker. What? But... Rhoda Tenero! I don't know anything about the phone! 
It wasn't me! It wasn't me! Miss Von Karma, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tanero right away. Wait, I have a theory. This is related to the incident with the key card. When the killer went to steal the key card, they conveniently stashed the cell phone in Miss Tanero's locker at the same time. Objection! This is related to the key card, all right. In the same way that we have zero proofs that the killer did just that. Ugh. The only voice that sings the truth is evidence. That is the one bird we cannot ignore. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point. All right then, why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? It must have something very incriminating on or in it. Hold it. What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Screen is cracked. The LCD is broken. Without a screen, you can't even place a call with this. Can't place a call, but you can get one, receive one, apparently. Alright. Why are you, like, so zoomed in? Can you go out? Ah, it's a camera lens. Come to think of it, I wonder, how exactly was Agent Hicks planning to preserve the crime scene of a smuggling? Francisca, I need you to confirm something. This cell phone, can it take pictures? Mr. Edgeworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. This, this looks like a very similar model to my own, and mine can take photos just fine. Do you think Agent Hicks could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures as evidence for his smuggling case. If so, I'd say there may be some very inconvenient photos in here for our killer smuggler. But the phone's all busted up, sir. Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. Ugh. I'll find a way, don't you worry about that. <sighs> May I go back to sleep now? Objection! The LCD screens on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure! God, imagine if she sounded like that. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data! What? What do you mean by that, Francisca? It looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. This phone still rang when I called it, meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Francisca, your phone if you please. Very well. It's transferring. All right, displaying it now. This is... Agent Hicks was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence for his smuggling case. Hey, the Olive Red's nowhere in this pic, sir. But this has no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? Ouch, she's right. There's not much we can find out from this about Agent Hicks's killer, sir. Is this it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? Is that the only photo? Hmm. What's all this? Hmm. Oh, they are cargo shipped from Virginia to Zhengfei. So the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zhengfei. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the contents of the boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English written on them anywhere. Hmm, one cluster of boxes is written in Virginian. It says... It is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer... What? What is for is that scary face? Miss Meal. Yes? It appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us with a piece of evidence after all. A striking piece that will point out who his killer is. Aha! Maybe you shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. 
The Borginian cargo and this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. Cloth. Cloth, baby! I don't even need to save state. That's easy. And what is that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood they had spilt. But there was one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? And now I have finally found my answer in this very photo. The cargo that was unloaded in Zengfei had cloth written on it. In Borginian, that is. And this is where the killer grabbed a piece from to clean up the blood with. Excuse me, you are not supposed to end sentences with prepositions with? Okay. Rookie mistake, Edgeworth. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Camille. Ha! That's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Virginian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. And if the killer supposedly could not comprehend Virginian, well then. Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. Bed sheets, baby! That says bed sheets! Hey, it says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir. Yeah, it says bed sheets! Precisely, and bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So, what are you trying to say? That if I were the criminal, this box of bed sheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Virginian clubs. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was this cargo hold, so they were afraid to leave signs that the box for the sheets had been opened. However, the Borginian cloth, well, that's a horse of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zengfei? That's right. That is why the Borginian cloth was used, and the only Borginian reader on board who could make such a calculated decision is you, Cammy Meal. You and you alone. Ah! Uh -huh. It would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zhangfei authorities in time. We may even find other evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. Grrr. So what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find out from our investigation in Zhangfei? Excuse me. He... he was Interpol. I couldn't stop it. I brought him here. She started taking pictures. I... I couldn't be found out. I... was scared. I... was in trouble. I... I... We finished making all the arrangements to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling route? Did she say anything about that? They're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully, we can get Seba. I forgot what they were gonna say. I did it too early. Whenever we even approached the topic, she just started foaming at the mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, the ring behind this whole mess means serious business. It looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Edgeworth! I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you very much. It was nothing. In fact, I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I... I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that... Well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Th that's I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. No, I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Oh, thank you. 
I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you, I'll keep that in mind. Now I must bid you farewell. May all your skies be blue, no matter where you go! I can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir, but boy, was it fun! Speak for yourself, my day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges. By the way, where's Francisca? Oh, she's filling out some customs paperwork for her departure. Departure? Yeah, Miss Von Karma's always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding her case. Detective, can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir. March 12th, 5.47 p.m., Hope Springs Airport. Francisca. I thought I told you when you first landed. I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time. However, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar reminiscences. Just who do you think I am? You are Francisca von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. Hmm. Until only a little while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing Piero, living her life on the name and fame her invincible father built. True, your father Manfred von Karma didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route we found this time is only one sliver of the big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there is another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent? He's a star among Interpol agents and has the highest successful arrest rate. Who knows? You may even run into him one day. Hmm. I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The fight has only just begun, Miles Edgeworth. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. And just like that, she's gone, huh, sir? Thank goodness, I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for her whip. Detective Gumshoe, I want to thank you for all your help and cooperation. Ah, it was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. <sighs> just how much did you cut his salary by, Francisca? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down the road in the patrol car if you want. But don't make me remind you, Detective. Safety first. Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Francisca von Karma. The smuggling route she was after. The leaders of that ring had already put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war... They would begin to make themselves known through the next incident. Hmm. Edgeworth speaking. Ah, finally! I called who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. Don't know who this is. And you are? Ah, have you forgotten my voice, Miles, my boy? M Mr. Armano? Uh, Amano? Okay. Amano, not Armando. Not Diego Armando. Mr. Amano. Ernest Amano, correct? Ah, so you do remember me! I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son. He's been kidnapped. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe and whatnot, and uh, follow me on Twitter or whatnot and stuff, and I will see you guys next time.